CBS 4 News, in partnership with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, present... We're in the danger zone. If this is here, we probably have the whole brain case from the dinosaur. Every time we try and uncover a bone, it makes things tricky to know what it is when it's so soaking wet. Dinosaur Hunter, Discovery in Highlands Ranch. Dinosaurs, giant beasts that roamed the Earth millions of years ago. I'm Jamie Leary. The Denver Museum of Nature and Science is home to dinosaurs from all over the world. This latest discovery of a Triceratops in Highlands Ranch gave photojournalist Mark Nature and me the opportunity to get up close and personal with one dedicated dinosaur hunter. When people imagine digging for dinosaurs, they may not realize it can be a messy job. Oh, you didn't tell me I have plaster on my face. <laughs> During dig season, it is rare to find Natalie Toth without plaster on her face. Likely a little grit in her teeth, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> she wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> oh, my God. She is proud to call herself a paleontologist. It was a little more than two years ago, Natalie landed the role of chief fossil preparator at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Well, this is where we store all of our field jackets that come in from our different field excursions. She oversees the logistics of digs, which can take her just about anywhere at the drop of a hat. So we collect fossils across the Rocky Mountain region. Sometimes we go to Madagascar, Kenya. Um, and in particular, we have in front of us here, these are the fossils that we collected from Highlands Ranch. It's when the dig season begins that this dinosaur hunter is in her element. Sucking me in. When you're a paleontologist, this is what you look forward to all year. You want just dig season to be as long as possible. At least I do. <laughs> With spring finally transitioning to summer. We're right at the peak of field season right now. So me and my other you know, colleagues that I work with, we're constantly in and out of the museum, going to different parts of the country to dig stuff up. And on top of that, we have volunteers that work in our lab that are constantly preparing fossils for us, which is incredible. From April to November, Natalie and her team travel from one fossil find to investigate the next. Even though it may be chaotic running around from point A to point B, it keeps things interesting and it allows me to keep learning also, which is, which is great. Do you have a suitcase that's constantly packed? You know, I, I really do. I basically like unload everything in my suitcase, put it in the washing machine, come back, pack it all back in, zip it up and go. It can be a lot of time away, but the research is important to Natalie. Not to mention, it's everything her inner child could ever want. Growing up, I remember collecting flowers and plants and bugs and toads and all kinds of things that I would try to bring into my mom's house. And so I always love nature, love being outdoors. That kind of transformed as I figured out I could go to college to study something that would allow me to be outdoors. But it took a while before paleontology crossed her radar. It wasn't exactly a field advertising to young women. I cannot think of a woman scientist that I admired or even really knew about or learned about when I was younger. I never thought that I could have this as a job when I was younger. I knew that people dug up dinosaurs, but I think I just thought it was for other, you know, people that wore white lab coats and, you know, were scientists. And so it's weird to think about that that's part of who I am now. <laughs> Not only is it a part of who she is, once in a while as if she was a kid again. It's perfect, right? It's pretty cute. She gets lucky with a dig in her own backyard. This time it was a call from a construction site in Highlands Ranch that caught her attention. We said, oh, this looks interesting, let's go check it out. We looked at some of the fossils that were coming out of the ground and decided, yes, these are fossils and yes, they're worth pursuing. Brinkman Constructors is the company in charge of expanding the Windcrest Retirement Facility and it put part of the project on hold for the fossils. The person who found the first one, George Lane, a contractor for the company. You know, a project like this, we're just so fortunate that somebody said, hey, stop there, I think I see something that looks like a bone. Still a rock. George may not be a paleontologist, but he is just as thrilled as Natalie when it comes to this find. When I found that first piece right there, it was, uh, the water was seeped it is like it is now. I just grabbed a shovel and started just on the main spot where it looked like the, most of the water was coming out, and there was a piece of rib about five inches long. In addition to his keen eye for fossils, his skills have come in handy in other major ways. It's thanks to him, the dig site has a working sump pump system. Everything that you see that has to do with water mitigation around the site, George has been a part of. And I mean, look at this enthusiasm. He loves it. I love, 
I love how excited he is about it. To Natalie, it speaks to a bigger picture about the importance of the discovery and all the people working together to make it a success. Anyone from Brinkman or from Kelly Trucking could have stopped the operation, found the fossils, and just carried on with their day like nothing ever happened. And so it is pretty remarkable how cooperative everyone's been out at the site. I cannot speak highly enough about the folks that are out here. Natalie would have been happy to find a few pieces so close to home, but discovered almost immediately there were many. Well, you just keep finding bones. Like, is that a bone? What'd you find? He's a bone. <laughs> a little bit of bone. <laughs> and they belong to a very large dinosaur. It's produced about, I'd say we're up to 20 bones now, with the hope that it produces more. After all, this discovery is in the Denver Basin. Oh man, I feel like he's getting close to the bone zone. Which is made of rocks that are over 60 million years old. <laughs> When the Brocky Mountains were uplifted, we were fortunate in that, you know, as that uplift happened, we'd also exposed all of this rock that happens to hold a lot of great dinosaur fossils in it. Oh, we need some goop for this one. The plaster casts will cover every single piece they find. Okay, this looks beautiful, you guys. So this is a rib bone, it's a single isolated rib. So what we're doing now is we're preparing to put a cap on top of it. So we're putting on separator right now, which is just damp paper towel. And then we're going to dunk some strips of burlap in plaster and coat the top of these with the plaster so that it protects the bone as we continue to dig around it. The more Natalie and her team began to chip away, the more they realized the excavation part of this was not going to happen without some challenges. We're in splash zone at the water park. <laughs> the dig began with snow and the mud, a constant struggle. The weather's been a challenge for sure. Not ideal to really do anything in a snowstorm. Natalie knows there is no such thing as a perfect dig. Ooh, that could have been bad. Fortunately, this dinosaur hunter loves a good challenge. This is my favorite part of my job. I mean, I love the lab. I love working in the lab. I love seeing the stuff that we collected from the field in the lab. <laughs> But being out here and getting to work on stuff, especially when you find new stuff and you're out looking in the desert or the Rocky Mountain region, you find new fossils, it's yeah. the best. There's no better feeling. And despite the mud, there's, a, there's part of the something. <laughs> this urban dig site is turning up fossil after fossil. Totally, that's bone. Yes. So we have, we think about 30% of the dinosaur skeleton right now. So, you know, that leaves a quite, quite a bit of it that's left to be found out here. It's enough to say for certain this is a triceratops worth a continued push. We're so fortunate that the weather has been really cooperative over the past few days. It's really dried things at the site. Unfortunately, the weather, only a small part of their mud issues. We're finding ways to work around it. We've really gotten really good at trench making. But Natalie and her team had no idea. It was a free flowing aquifer slowly turning their dig site into a pool. Their mud problems just beginning. Oh. This is a rib, Mark, and this is not, this is, we're in the danger zone. Mud is here all the time. The sun may be shining for paleontologist Natalie Toth and her crew, but today that doesn't matter. The water, it's almost coming out of the ground, right? We're kind of in this weird sub aquifer system, and so there's still a ton of water and a ton of mud, and it's making things a little challenging. This may be one of the muddiest digs anyone has ever worked on, but the team seems to be adjusting. Well, you just keep finding bones, and see under here is sort of easy. The mud is making it hard to tell what's a fossil and what's not. Oh no, charcoal. Volunteers have been working some long hours and have been out here now for more than 10 days. You take a step and you just sink. And then you take another step and you sink. <laughs> the perfect opportunity for someone with some fresh clothes to take over. Just put me to work. Tell me what you need me to do. And I've already slipped twice, so be careful. Yeah. Each jacket contains at least one fossil, and every find needs to be completely encased. One, two, three. Yay! <laughs> Definitely getting a little dirty. That's okay by me. I'm chipping underneath another cast of fossils. Eventually, we'll flip this and plaster the other side. No, this is on the job training. I'm not a professional, not like some people here. <laughs> You've been doing this for 10 years, you say? But you learn something yeah. new at every dig, so. Yeah, it's my first dig. 
The humming of sump pumps is the new official soundtrack for the Highlands Ranch dig. It's a crash course in hydrology for this paleontologist. This is geology in the works, you guys. This free-flowing aquifer by itself, manageable, but combined with afternoon storms. We have water coming from the earth. We have water coming from the sky. That feels like it's turning into hail. <laughs> this is pretty par for the course. The weather has slowed things down significantly, and there's another problem, but it's a good one in the world of paleontology. They keep finding more bones. Oh, this is the bone right there. And you thought you were going to be done with field work like this by like June 15th or something? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, initially when we had just found a few bones scattered, we thought, oh, we'll wrap this up in just a couple weeks. <laughs> and here we are, end of June, still finding more bones, still taking more bones out of the ground. <laughs> Rain or shine. Natalie can laugh because she's got a great team behind her. See, there's a bone right there. Plus, that laugh. Yes. <laughs> it can bring just about anyone's spirits up. <laughs> no, so I've been out here almost every day. My colleague Salvador has been out here almost every day. We have a group of volunteers out here with us every single day. There's no way I could do this by myself. No, no way. So I'm so grateful for them. That looks and feels like bone to me. A sentiment her right-hand man, Salvador Bastian, echoes, especially given the challenges of this dig. It's been really great, honestly. The volunteer crew at the museum has been incredibly helpful and willing to come out here and hang out and work hard in the mud. Salvador, like Natalie, is a fossil preparator for the museum. There are projects to get back to at the museum. It's been a lot of fun, and we found a lot of really cool bones. With a dig site so close to home, many of these volunteers finally have the chance to do some field work. This is a bucket list item for me. It helps me learn a lot because when I get it, it's usually already out of the jacket in the lab. But for me to see where it starts. These aren't just any volunteers. Most have spent their lives working with fossils. Absolutely nothing in the world beats digging up a dinosaur. <laughs> this is a first dig for the interns on site, like Luke. Yesterday when we came back out here, it was swamp. And Ellie. Come on, Ellie, we need your super strength. They are learning from these seasoned volunteers to dive right in. Rule number one. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I'm not, I'm not scared. Don't be scared to dig deep and in this case, get really, really muddy. <gasps> With sump pumps, trenches and heavy moving equipment, the dig site has turned into quite the spectacle. It's hard not to take notice. What's happening? I think they may have made another discovery here. Linda Story and her husband, Alfonso Torres, are new to the Windcrest retirement community. We had no idea it would be this interesting, did we? Word of the find traveled fast at Windcrest. The first day we realized it was dinosaurs, we turned on Jurassic Park. <laughs> the fossils, definitely the best part of their view, but the couple has taken an interest in another important aspect of the dig. This uh, cat driver is so skilled. And we were watching him, and I was watching the finesse with which he could move. Linda and Alfonso have no idea just how important that driver is. It's been a full-time job keeping up with everything and, and trying to help them deal with all the groundwater on top of it. T.J. Finney is spending his free time helping Natalie look for more fossils. He is incredibly skilled, and he's the, there is a reason he's doing this, you know, and not just moving dirt around. This type of equipment, a luxury in the paleontology world. I cannot think of a better place for a dinosaur to be found than around a bunch of big, heavy equipment. From TJ's perspective... We'll dig a little bit at a time, and uh, hope that uh, you don't break anything. So he's got to be very careful, I assume. Yeah, so as you can see, he's taking things down just a few inches at a time, and these guys are just incredible at operating the equipment. We're so grateful. So you guys are going to be here for a while. <laughs> we'll be here for a little bit. We'll have to come back tomorrow to finish things up. Come back tomorrow? Not a problem, considering the convenient location. Get like a handful. Yeah. Just okay. scoop it up and... It's something volunteers like Sally live for. Obviously, you love it enough to come out on a holiday weekend. Yeah, it's really it's kind of interesting when you're working in the lab. This is a lot of hard work. You uncover things that at first it looks like there's nothing there, and all of a sudden you see something. It's like a present. You know, yeah. Look, yeah. One of the presents, a fossil that connects the spine to the skull. And so this sits in the back of the dinosaur's head. One of many pieces that still need to be encased for transport. We're getting ready to split these two rib jackets apart. So this one is a rib, this is a rib and a piece of frill. And you can see how tightly jacketed together they are. So we're getting ready to flip it over. Things may be taking longer than expected. Woo! 
Nice job, thank you. But Natalie is glad. He said, yep, this is worth it, we're gonna do this. And I would have never, ever thought that it would have turned into something this, this incredible. One, two, three, go, go, go. This is no small Triceratops. It is a fully grown adult, and the biggest jacket they've put together so far weighs close to a thousand pounds. Others are almost as heavy. This is gonna need probably lift assist on the fat yeah, end. That one's gonna need two on that end. Each piece helping scientists like Natalie understand a little more about these prehistoric creatures. All the rocks here are just that right, perfect right age, where the fossils are between you know 68 to 66 million years old. That's really kind of the peak of dinosaur diversity in some regard. Today they're prepping the fossils for their trek back to the museum, and with so many to load, moving them is an all hands on deck event. Oh, one. <laughs> oh, what's the at? Some are easier to load than others. Awesome. All are delicate. It's the only time you'll see a nervous Natalie. Oh my gosh, you guys. Which is where the loader comes in handy. And while it helps, Ooh, watch fingers. the chance a finger will get smushed. Watch our fingers, George, you scare me. Uh, about as high as the chances they'll find more bone. We found more of the rib. Moving day is wishful thinking. This will likely take a couple of days. Oh, yes. <laughs> Most people would never associate exercising with paleontology, but clearly the job requires brain and brawn. <laughs> Throw in a positive attitude. Plaster party? Yep. I'm right behind you. And that's Natalie in a nutshell. Are you tired? Never. Never. <laughs> the rest of the crew seems to share her vigor. Oh my god, George. He's got it. You're a monster. <laughs> That's not even the biggest jacket. This is it. And after chipping away at some of the excess dirt. One, two, three. Oh, yes. Okay. It's still just as heavy. Natalie can barely watch. You're going to have to curl it because it's going to want to. Otherwise, she's going to pull it. There's a lot on the line inside of this jacket as part of the skull and part of the iconic frill. It's literally make it or break it. Oh. He's got to go fast. Oh, he's got to go fast. He's got to go fast. <laughs>no other way to move it. This chunk weighs nearly 1,000 pounds. Full send. Full send. That way. Nice. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Inside of it, parts of the skull and the frill. It will stay here for now. Where's the chunk of the bone? Right, right by your, your camera. Right down there. Directly down. It needs more plaster to protect it. What do you think this overall weight? Think Probably weight. like 1,500 pounds. It's, it was big. But hopefully we'll get it down to less than that as we continue to remove all this sand and mud, lighten it up a little for its journey back to the museum. Today there are other fossils to load. And most will require the help of Kelly Trucking. There's just one more day on site before the fossils move to their new home. The rain's not helping that dry. <laughs> Despite having to wrap things up, Natalie is in her typical good mood. Good morning. Everything is sliding into place. Nice. But at this point, they only have about 30% of the Triceratops. How do you decide now is a good time to stop? Yeah, it is a hard decision to make. You know, you always have that innate curiosity where you're like, okay, just a few more feet, maybe we'll bump into something. Yeah. Um, traditionally, the rule of thumb is, you know, a meter or two beyond the last found bone. That is the technical rule, but they've been out here now digging for eight weeks. That's four times longer than they planned. You almost never find a complete dinosaur when you're out in the field. And I would say that that's what keeps me going is you're like, all right, just a few more feet and maybe we'll find, you know, the rest of the skull over here. A few more feet, maybe there's, you know, a juvenile next to this adult dinosaur. Do you ever imagine yourself like in the backhoe after hours just digging away? Like, That'd be the best. Yeah. TJ would give me the keys to the backhoe, I'd be out there every day. <laughs> <laughs> there's no doubt Natalie could figure it out, but the fossils are en route to the museum, and there's work to be done in the lab. So, big blocks here. 
uh, that's labeled rib. Um, some other miscellaneous. Looks like there's vertebra rib in here. This is one of the bigger blocks that we collected. It looks like they weighed at 780 pounds. It's a pretty big guy. <laughs> For Natalie, the dig season isn't over, but most of the volunteers you saw on site are now busy in the lab. Their job here, not just about the fossils. It's far bigger. It's about making sure future generations stay excited about science. And it's no surprise, Natalie has a captivated audience. Did you hear that we found a dinosaur in Denver? As they were building all the stuff, they bumped into a dinosaur that looks just like this. These are all the different bones of the skeleton that we found just a few weeks ago. Dinosaurs are such a great gateway topic into science because it is something that captivates everyone from age 4 to 104. What are you making? So, I'm not making anything, but I'm working to clean all the mud and sand off the surface of the dinosaur bone right here. The Triceratops may be getting all the attention today, but there are many projects going on inside the lab. We probably have anywhere from 10 to 20 different creatures that we're working on in the lab, and that's not just dinosaurs. We work on mammals and turtles and, of course, other dinosaurs. The scope of work is almost hard to imagine. It's a dream come true for interns like Ellie Erb. Natalie called me before my first day at work ever. I started in June, and she said, yeah, just so you know, we're going out into the field tomorrow. Wear your hiking boots. <laughs> she had just come in to, on her first day of her internship. I got her to the museum. I got her her badge, and I was like, get in the truck. We're going down to Highlands Ranch. we got to go dig in the mud and get this dinosaur out. And um, I'm hoping that it was memorable. Ellie had never been on a dig before Highlands Ranch. The Highlands Ranch dig was my first one. So that was interesting, and it was sort of fun to adjust to the different digs I did later because I would, I would get to a dig site in North Dakota and be like, wow, it's not underwater. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. The experience has been invaluable. I have visual confirmation <laughs> that there is a brain case from a triceratops in here. And getting to learn from someone like Natalie, bonus. She's such an energetic person, and it's so inspiring that she's just out there all the time lifting things that weigh twice as much as she does, <laughs> acting like there's nothing nothing wrong with it. She's just a beast. One, two, three. This is something Natalie hopes to influence. As a child, I can't think of, you know, we didn't have a female Bill Nye the Science Guy. We need more women in science, so I think that since I get to have that role, it's important that I take it on full force. While she may not have set out to be a role model, it's easy to see. Natalie is admired. So when we flip it over, hopefully it'll just be a nice plateau of rock. The job may be messy and tough with some really long days. I wasn't too surprised when we saw that there was more bone here yesterday. <laughs> I have no life outside of these puzzles. <laughs> um, but she knows there is still so much to learn. What's so small? And each fossil she helps uncover contributes to a much bigger picture. They're used by researchers and they stay in our collection for forever. This is contributing to that body of research, so every fossil is special. And when these kids grow up to be dinosaur hunters, you'll likely find Natalie... Hopefully doing the same thing, but maybe with just more gray hair, I don't know. <laughs> I absolutely love this work, I love my job, and I hope that, you know, 30 years from now, I, I feel the same and I get to keep doing the same thing. We hope Natalie gets to keep filling up this room, digging for dinosaurs and inspiring generations to come. Thank you to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science for allowing us to share the story of this dinosaur hunter and her discovery in Highlands Ranch.